Why I'm an Alabama Fan by John Coley. Squirrel. It all started back in the late 1900s. I was a loyal Georgia boy. Georgia was my home state, and of course, I love football. Squirrel. Well, one early spring day, I decided to go squirrel hunting with my trusty 410. So I put on my camo and my trusty bulldog hat. So there I was. I was out in the woods looking for a greasy squirrel dinner. Suddenly I heard something rustling in the bushes. I looked over my shoulder to see one of the hugest set of antlers I've ever seen in my hunting career. Squirrel. Well, only an idiot would shoot at a deer in the bushes without a clear shot with just a little 410, so I fired. Squirrel. Right then, two things happened both at once and simultaneously. The animal dashed away, and a wind that was both cold and frigid at the same time and simultaneously blew relentlessly through my very bones. You see, this was the early spring of 1993, the year of the great blizzard. That ain't no squirrel. I mean, it was colder than an Eskimo eating ice cream. The temperature dropped 30 degrees in 30 minutes. Only a fool would follow an injured animal into the wilderness, so I decided to follow the deer. I couldn't live with myself if the animal were injured in inclement weather. I traped through the frozen woods over to my neighbor's pond. There I saw it, but it wasn't a deer. Golly! To my astonishment, I saw the strangest animal that I'd ever seen, the jackalope. And squirrel. The jackalope is a rare animal. Basically, it's a rabbit with horns. They come in various sizes and are usually found mounted on the walls of various southern eateries. This one was enormous, and its foot pads were frozen to the newly formed ice in the middle of the pond. Squirrel. I was glad to see that it wasn't injured, but I was chagrined to see that it was trapped. It was unsportsmanlike to shoot it in this predicament. Besides, I couldn't retrieve such a huge quarry from a frozen pond anyway, so I decided to help it. I fired my trusty squirrel shooter into the air to scare it. Squirrel. My plan works like a charm, except for one thing. The animal jumped with a mighty leap. It was free, but not all of it. It broke free of its very skin. It hopped away buck naked and pink into the woods. Its hide, antlers and all collapsed onto the super sticky ice. What a revolting development. I had to do something. The poor thing would freeze to death. Then it hit me like a ton of bricks. I knew what to do. There's the bricks. And the squirrel. That ain't no squirrel. There was only one person who could help. Only one brave warrior could face such a bleak situation. My grandma. So I called the poor thing to me. It reluctantly followed me, sensing that I meant no harm for the time being, and we made the arduous journey to my grandmother's house. 
squirrel. So I asked my grandma if she could knit the poor thing a sweater. She looked at the thing and said, It may be the ugliest dog I've ever laid my eyes on, but it doesn't deserve to freeze to death. So five minutes later, Big G handed me a sweater. So I slipped it over its head and we had one jackalope that was simultaneously cozy and happy both at the same time. Then it scampered away. Squirrel. But the joke was on me. You see, of course, my grandma was a Tennessee fan, so the sweater she knitted was orange. Orange is the universal color for, don't you? So from then on, no hunter worth his salt would even look toward the jackalope. And of course, no one would believe me. Not even the squirrel. After that fateful day, I got to thinking. As I looked at my Georgia hat and all the bad luck it brought me, I also considered the bad luck the Tennessee sweater had wrought. I decided I could no longer be a Bulldog fan. There was no way I was going to turn to Tennessee, but I needed to stay in the tri-state area. Squirrel. Then it hit me. I couldn't be an Auburn fan. I wasn't a complete heathen. If I was going to have a favorite team, it might as well be one that knows how to win. So from then on, I changed my Go Dogs cheer to a Roll Tide battle cry. Squirrel. world.